Well, I made quite a few films in what I think is now about a 25-year career uh, in British television, making films for British television and film festivals. Um, uh, let's see, the most recent one, which I'm talking about tonight, is called Baby P, The Untold Story, and it's the story of sort of the tabloid aftermath of that horrific uh, death of 17-month-year-old Peter Connolly back in 2007, and, and it's really about how social workers, in one particular doctor, were scapegoated and what it tells us about sort of how power operates in this culture. Uh, before that, I made a film for ITV about um, uh, the, uh, of a mother who had murdered her son. Um, uh, but the, the point of that film was really to reveal that uh, parents, particularly mothers who kill their children, are often uh, mentally ill at the time. and We have a tendency to demonize them and think of them as monsters when in fact they deserve our compassion. I'm most known for a film called The Falling Man, which is about a, a photograph of someone who jumped or fell from the World Trade Center on 9-11. Um, and I use that photograph to kind of unpack uh, the American response to 9-11. Um, and that's, that, was, that was a very, very big film. It sold to about 60 countries in the world. Uh, I also made a film called The Blood of the Rose, set in Kenya a few years ago. It was about uh, the murder of a conservationist, a white conservationist named Joan Root. And that film was really uh, kind of a, I mean, it was a detective story. I tried to find out who killed her, but it ended up really being a kind of profile of uh, a sort of disappearing British colonial culture uh, in Kenya, and I suspect in other parts of uh, Africa. I made a 90-minute film, um, ooh, about more than 10 years ago now, about uh, uh, a gambling addict, a guy named James, who became a very close friend of mine. Uh, it was called The Confession. And it was really about a man in his early 50s who was trying to make sense of his life. It's, uh, I sort of lived with him for four months, mostly in his bedroom, and talked to him. Um, I could go on, uh, but that's probably, some, that's probably some of my recent work. Well, I've won a few awards, but I wouldn't say that's the proudest moment of my career. I think the proudest moments of my career have been um, when, uh, when I learn that my films have actually uh, made people think about things uh, deeply uh, and maybe in a different way and maybe, uh, maybe feel compassion for people that they otherwise would not feel compassion for. I got an email just... Um, literally two weeks ago from a social worker uh, who wrote me about um, how my baby pee film had really sort of changed, uh, had, had rewritten that story and had made people realize that the death of the child wasn't due to individual error, but uh, was due to kind of systemic problems. And that, you know, that's wonderful that your, your film has actually led to people thinking about a story in an entirely different way and in a more productive way. You know, I'm also really proud, I just mentioned uh, that film, The Confession, about this gambling addict. I think that film, this will sound immodest, but I think it's true, I think it may have saved his life. Uh, James told me while we were making the film that he was using my film as a sort of suicide note to explain to all his family and friends why he had uh, stolen from them, abused them for many, many years. And I think that film for him, um, was almost a form of therapy, and I think it helped him turn a big corner. Um, so it's it's you know it's when you've changed individual lives or you've changed uh, uh, a cultural's understanding of a story that that really makes you feel proud, and it's really the reason I went into the profession to begin with. Well, it depends what kind of work you want to do. Um, you know, television is a is a is a big tent and there are lots of different uh, kinds of uh, productions. You know, if you want to uh, make um, sort of Strictly Come Dancing and reality television and more entertainment programs, I think um, I'd encourage, you know, I encourage anybody to follow their, uh, this American sociologist who talks about people following their bliss. You know, everybody, every student listening to this should follow their bliss. You shouldn't listen to your parents who want you to do some responsible thing and you should really try to do what your heart yearns to do. 
Uh, if your heart yearns to make docu serious documentary films, you should know that it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. Uh, in the 20, 25 years I've lived in this country and made films, television has moved from being really a public service medium to a commercial medium. And so the, 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 the space that serious documentary films, which I make 90 minute, you know, substantive, I hope subtle films, really is this small now. Um, so you have to really, really, really want to do it. Um, uh, it doesn't mean it's impossible, of course everything's possible, but to my advice would be uh, really make sure you want to do it because it's a, it's a very hard thing to do. It was easier for me breaking in, but things have changed uh, enormously in the last 20, 25 years. My inspiration, I get my inspiration from uh, some of the people that I make films about. Uh, these are not people that are in the headlines. Uh, these are people who have integrity. Um, and they're often punished for having integrity. We live in a world where if you have integrity, life's a lot harder. So I met a woman, for example, uh, just three weeks ago uh, on a film I'm making at the moment who um, was a whistleblower and uh, she blew the whistle on a colleague who was sexually abusing boys. And she, this will make the audience laugh, uh, whoever watches this, but she told me after this happened, she was sent to Coventry. And I said, well, how far a commute is Coventry from where you live? I didn't realize that was a British expression. But she's somebody who has suffered from having integrity and from doing the right thing. Um, and uh, so I, you know, the, the film on the gambler I just mentioned, I got an enormous inspiration from him because he uh, was, he's uh, died a couple of years ago, but he was an extraordinarily courageous man to take on an incredibly, uh, like all addictions, just the, such a difficult thing to overcome and, and to overcome it. Um, so, uh, you know, I get inspiration from people no, nobody's ever heard of, and I like making films about people nobody's ever heard of for that reason. You know, we live in a celebrity-obsessed culture, and um, most of those people are of no interest to me, but uh, there are people that live around us all the time who are deeply inspirational, and they're the people that uh, I'm interested in and I draw my inspiration from.